Compliance regulations and data growth are demanding longer-term retention. This is driving the need for a more scalable backup solution and repository type. Veeam Backup and Replication integrates with object storage such as Amazon and AWS as well as S3 compatible storage. Our wizard driven console allows us to easily add those repository types and leverage them inside of our scale out backup repositories. This will allow us to minimize our need and pressure on that on prem storage and leverage that object storage for a much more scalable solution. Let's take a look inside of our console and see how we can configure those repositories and get data into the cloud. Now, once inside the Veeam Backup and Replication console, the first step would be to add the cloud credentials. In the main menu, we have that option under Manage Cloud Credentials. We can then add and remove and go through and edit some of the ones that are currently have been added. So here we have a pop-up mentioning it's at least part of one job. Do you sure you want to make these adjustments? We hit yes, and it showcases the access key as well as the seeker key, which is granted by AWS. So here you'll also notice we have multiple types of accounts. So Microsoft Azure, AWS, and even Veeam Service Cloud Providers. This makes credential management very simple with this one management interface. So that is adding those credentials. Now it's all about creating the repositories. Now the scale out backup repositories, you can have multiple of them and multiple performance tiers per scale out backup repository. Now the performance tier is local disk. So here you'll see in our console, we have a repositories, which is a uh, Windows machine. Unless we can go through and actually see some of those properties, such as of course the name that we've given it. And as I progress through the wizard, we can also choose the location or the server in which we'll use as the repository and also choose the path in which we'll land those backups. We can also go through and limit the amount of concurrent tasks and decide if it's going to be a mount server by leveraging vPower NFS. Pretty straightforward stuff with a typical Windows repository. So once we've added that local repository, we then want to use that cloud repository to, to really reduce the need and pressure on that on-premises storage. So here we give our name for the account and of course give it the credentials that we've set up previous in the data center in the region as well as the need for a gateway server. Perhaps we want to reduce the load on the repository or our repositories don't have access to the internet. We'll use a gateway server in order to accomplish that. Now, as we hit next in the wizard, it was going to go ahead and take us through a quick load, giving it a moment to do so. And at that point, it'll go ahead and populate the AWS buckets that are created inside AWS. Now, we can't edit these because this is already established, such as the data center region, as well as the bucket itself. We can also go through and limit the object storage consumption, maybe be a little bit more cautious and be able to manage that cloud storage spend a little bit more accurately. Now, one of my favorites here is the infrequent access storage class. Now, in parentheses there, it does state additional costs. That is subject, of course, but it is great for those long-term archivals. Maybe that GFS policy we have established. Uh, again, great use for that infrequent access. And that's essentially adding that object storage into the Veeam console, which we'll then use as the cloud tier in our scale-out backup repository. So we'll go ahead and finalize this wizard. And once we finish this portion off, then we can go ahead and create that scale out backup repository. Now, once this configuration finishes, we can go ahead and close this wizard and begin creating that scale out backup repository. Now we have a handful already created in our lab. This one we're picking on here with that Windows machine, as well as that AWS S3 capacity tier that we just finished creating. Now, right clicking that server will get us into the properties with a name, the Windows machine itself with the performance here being local disks. And we can even choose per VM backup files, which is recommended great way to improve performance, as well as even performing full backups when the required extent is offline. The placement policy consists of two options. Data locality being the default will ensure that incremental backup files will be placed on the same extent as its corresponding full backup file. The performance tier will take incremental backup files and place them on a different extent from its full backup and really provide great performance with those raw storage devices. 
Now, once we get to the capacity tier, we choose the object storage in which we want to land those backups. And here being the capacity tier, we also want to look at the scheduling. We can now go into this window and determine when we're going to allow those backups to be sent off site. Purple being the permitted and allowed and white being denied to ensure that we're not hindering those production hours. Now, once we've set the time periods in which we're going to allow those backup files to be sent to that cloud storage, we then determine its operational restore window. Checking that box along with the 10 days we see here will allow those backup files to sit locally until moved into the object storage. Now, these need to be sealed and validated backup chains, but still allows for many different restores once they're landing in that object storage. Now, along that, we also have things like encryption, where we can easily manage encryption passwords and add new ones uh, if we need to have that data encrypted as it's uploaded to the object storage. And we'll go ahead and apply and finish this wizard, much like many that we've already seen. And after this, we'll go ahead and take a look at the file structure of that performance tier and of that scale out backup repository. If we take a moment, go to the navigate down to the bottom left to files, you'll see we have our repo, that local performance tier, along with a couple of different backup jobs, a VMware, as well as a Windows agent of a domain controller. Now, if we go into the domain controller, we'll see the backup chain. We have a metadata file along with a series of incrementals. And you'll notice if we look at the size of these, that's what's kind of interesting is these incrementals are quite small in comparison to the ones we see below, which are much larger, true incrementals along with those full backup files. Those, the bottom ones, are the ones sitting on that performance tier, right? that local storage. And if we adjust by, by date modified, you'll notice that the VIBs, or the smaller, the shell backup files, are the ones that are most recently modified. They're also interspaced randomly within those backup chains. And if I go in and adjust by name, you'll notice here that we can actually see the order in which these VMs were backed up. At the very top being our oldest full, followed by its corresponding incrementals, following suit for that entire retention policy. Again, the bottom ones being the largest, the ones sitting local on that performance tier, along with the ones at top being an indicator of the backup files that are sitting in the object storage. Now, that being an agent backup, you'll see a series of zeros. It's a physical machine, our domain controller, along with the index data, that's a full backup, as a metadata file along with those individual index files. So as we can go in and we can actually see those individual files and adjust by name and adjust by size. Now going into our VMware backup, you'll notice we have two different virtual machines. Here we have SP-app1 as well as SP2-FE1. So there's two different full backups and we can go in and see its different indexes. As you'll notice here versus the agents, we actually have an index per virtual machine. And again, we can dive in and see those independent index items. And this wraps up our walkthrough of the capacity tier and how we can manage the data inside the scale out backup repositories. Thanks for watching and check out veeam.com for more educational videos.